Welcome to our video series with this CAT or Computer Application Technology PRAC exam for grade 11s from November 2020 and it's been donated to us by our study opportunities who've allowed us to do a video walkthrough of this exam paper. So we're doing the fourth question which is the HTML question so let's get stuck into it. So the HTML question or web design question, we've got an incomplete web page called ForBridge. You know, it was open in a web browser. We're allowed to use programs like Notepad++ or like a Notepad. You can't use Word on that. So we're going to do that. So they want us to complete a couple of things. So let's first open up the web page so you can see how I do it just to help you. So I've got the files over there and that's the one that we are working with. So what I tend to do is I first right click on it and then edit it with Notepad++. And there we go, it's opened in Notepad++. If you don't have Notepad++ on your computer at home, then just go to the websites for it. Just search for Notepad++ on Google and you'll, I'm sure you'll find it and you can install it. It is a free program. So what I tend to do is I will then run this program in Chrome, whichever browser you want to use. I'm going to use Chrome for me because I like Chrome. And there it's opened up in Chrome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this to the left over here. And then I'm going to select the web page browser version of it so that I can see the code for the HTML here and I can see what it looks like over here. So I can edit here and see the changes over here. So this is the setup I like to use. So now that we've got it all ready, we can now get into the questions. So do not remove these comments. They've mentioned there is an HTML tag sheet at the bottom. At the bottom, you should have an HTML tag sheet that you can use to help you. So you can use this, but it's very good to know your tags in advance because it'll make it go a lot quicker, but you can refer to this if you need to. So let's go look at the question. So there's the web page. The first thing they do is add HTML code so that all the text on the web page will be displayed in Calibri font, which means we're going to change the font of all text. So if I come here, they've already made a font tag for me and it's gone purple, which means it's going to close somewhere. There you can see it's closed. That's the nice thing about Notepad++. When you click on a tag, you can see when it closes because it goes purple. If it doesn't go purple, then it's incorrect. Then there's no closing tag. So we want the type of font to be Calibri, which means we want the face attribute to be Calibri. Now you make sure that you spell Calibri correctly. So it, I think it's spelled like that. You can double check the spelling over there. So Calibri. And so we're going to save our changes and then we come to our web page and we're going to refresh it. And you can see that the font has changed. So let's go to the next question. 4.2, locate the text. What do you see near the top of the page? There it is over there. Change the font color to green and the text must be displayed in the largest level style. So that's, we're talking about different heading levels. So that's a heading one, heading two. So we want it to be green and the largest heading style. First of all, the color of the font. So remember it's American spelling. That's why we don't put a U there and we want it to equal to green. Remember your attributes are the attribute name equals the value in double quotes. So let's just test that to see that that works. There you can see it's a slight green over there and we want that to be a heading of the highest level which is a H1 tag. It's not the font tag but an H1 tag. So I'm going to put an H1 tag there in front of the font and at the end of the font tag I'm going to close the H1 tag or the end of the closing font tag. I'm going to save that. Let's refresh it. There we go. You can see that's a lot bigger and you can see that it is actually green. Then the image four dots must be displayed below the text. What do you see? But the image is currently not being displayed. Correct the HTML code to the display and change the height of the image to 200. So as you can see, we can't really see that image. It's called four dots dot JPG. But if I go to the folder and you look at the four dots file, it's actually a PNG file. Now, if you can't see the extension on your computer, you can also right click on a image go to properties and there you'll be able to see what type of file it is. So use that to help you. So we know that it's not a JPG or JPEG, it's a PNG file. So that's the first change. We must give its name correct. Also make sure that the name on the front is all correct. It must be exactly the same and that it's in the same folder as your HTML files. So if I do that change, there we go. We can see the image is displayed and then they said that they want the height to be 200. So we're going to add another attribute to the image tag and change the height equal to 200. So you can keep adding attributes inside a tag. So we're going to save it, refresh it, 
And there we go, I made it just a bit smaller. Then 4.4, locate the paragraph that starts with bridging the gap and ends with the right direction. There is the paragraph that we're referring to. And add code so that the paragraph displays as shown below without the border. Only the left side of the paragraph is shown. As you can see, bridging the gap is in bold and then everything after it is on a brand new line. So when I come here to my code, you can see that we want that to be in bold. So I'm going to put a B tag around bridging the gap. And then at the end of the word gap, I'm going to close the bold tag. Let's save it and refresh. So you can see that it's bold. And then we want all of this to be on a brand new line. So I'm going to put a break tag here which means anything after the break will be on a new line. So if I save it and refresh it, you can see that it's now on a new line and still part of the same paragraph. And now it looks exactly like that. So let's go to 4.5, locate the text, click here to see the full picture. There it is, click here to see the full picture. Ensure that if the user clicks on this text, the image file will open. So we wanna open this image file and they want the A tag. Now they've already got the image file there. If I come over here, you can see that there's an A tag. First of all, you'll see that there's nothing between the A tag and the close A tag. So there's nothing to click on. So we actually need to move this close A to the end here so that anything between the anchor tag will become the hyperlink. So that way, at least we've got something to click on. So that's the first thing we want to do. The next thing we want to open up this image and the property of the A tag, which would make us go to a website or go to another file is the href attribute. And we're going to make that equal to this picture as long as that picture is in the same folder it'll then open up that picture so let's test it let's save it and we're going to refresh our web page and you see you see how this is now a full link now if i click on it you can see that the picture is now open i'm going to go back over there so go back to the original web page so when you've got an a tag you need something between the open and close to be able to click on so that that can become the link and your href will direct you to where you want to go, whether it's to a particular file, like in this case, this picture, or to another website, like Google's website. So you put Google's URL there. So let's do 4.6, locate the bulleted list under enter technology. Enter technology, here is the bulleted list. And they say the phone, change the HTML code so that the list is displayed as follows. So we want it to look like this. Currently, it looks like that. So first of all, you'll notice that it's bullets. And here we've got numbering system so that's an ordered list where this is unordered so therefore we're going to change this from an unordered list to an ordered list so those ul's are going to become ol's first of all save it and refresh so there we can see there's at least numbering happening and the type of ordered list that we want now your type is equal to in double quotes whatever the first option is so if you want numbers you could put a one there if you want roman numerals you would put an r there but we want capital letters so i'm going to put a capital a because that's the first option in our ordered list so i'm going to say type equals capital a save it and there you can see it's now ABC, which is getting very close to what we want. But we'll see that the last value, knowledge and skills, is not in the list. And the reason for that, if you look there, knowledge and list, you see it's got a close tag and a close tag, where all of these have open and close. This one is just a close close, which means we must take that away. That's a mistake. So if I do that and save and refresh, you can see now all of them are in the bulleted list. And that's 4.6. Then 4.7, locate the horizontal line near the bottom of the web page. There it is. Add code so that the line is displayed as follows. The line must be aligned against the left side of the web page. So therefore, I'm going to add an align equal to left. So we're going to add an align attribute. The line must always extend across half the width of the web page, even if the web page is resized. So that means we don't want the width to be 50, but we want the width to be 50 percent so it's always a percentage of the web page so let's save and then we come here and we're going to see that there's the line at the moment that's 50 pixels but if i refresh it now you can see that it's aligned on the left and it's taken up half of the page if i change our web page to be a bit bigger do you see how it gets bigger itself because it's always going to be 50 percent of the web page no matter how much i change it so that's working there and then the last one, 4.8, locate the text first version at the bottom of the page and ensure that this text is not displayed when the web browser is viewed, but we mustn't delete the text. That means we're probably going to have to make it a comment. Now to make text into a comment, you put it inside of a tag, but you put exclamation dash dash and you see how it goes green. Now you can see there, they've shown you how to do text that mustn't be displayed. You can see in the web page, there's no 4.8 and 4.7, all the numbers because they are comments. So we're going to 
make that into a comment exactly like it is over there. So you've already got a little bit of a cheat sheet here to show you how to do it, but you could also use your HTML tag sheet to show you how to do that. So that's how you make it so that it can't be viewed. So if I see that first version, if I save it now and I refresh it, you see it's not displaying it anymore. And that's how you can get rid of text, but keep it there technically. I think that is all of the questions for the HTML question. We've got one more question to go. Just a reminder again that if you go onto YouTube, we've got playlists for all content for CAT for Excel, Access, and HTML as well as Word. So go look at those videos if you are struggling with any of the concepts that we are doing in these videos and help you revise for your exams. Please go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to have you support the channel by sharing us with your friends, as well as our other YouTube channel at Mr. Long Computer Terms, where we can help you with theory. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.